Hey everyone, Mike Vignola here, and in this video, I'm going to do an in-depth look at Quantum, our non-static evolving pad library. First, I'll go through the GUI, play through some presets, and then do a deep dive into some of the concepts about the instrument. So let's check it out. Quantum is using our Infinite Motion engine. I'm going to start right here in the center, and then we'll go out to everything else. This is your master LFO. This controls any parameters that you see uh, with these little um, mini LFO buttons. Um, and this is only going to control the uh, depth, which I'll get into. Right here on the left is your rate. Um, and that controls the speed of the LFO. So if I turn this on, this is your crossfade, so it'll it'll morph between each layer. I'll demonstrate here. You can speed things up. And slow things down. You can also MIDI learn a parameter like so. that. On your right is the depth. This controls the intensity of the LFO. And you can learn, you can really learn any parameter on the interface. Here are your LFO waveforms. Uh, you can you have five to choose from. You have sine wave, triangle, sawtooth, square, and random. So you're on off. This is your LFO bypass. So when this is on, it'll bypass any of these settings here. So as you see. So it'll it'll bypass and go to your LFO. So if, so basically the way this works is, this is an attenuverter. Um, this is going to control the intensity, a percentage of the intensity. So your depth, if you say you have it set to one hundred, and you have this set to fifty, it's only going to do a fifty percent of whatever you set this to your master LFO. So. Bring it down to 50%, say. So you only see it move. You can move it down. Like that. We're up. So this only controls the depth, not the rate. The rate is a universal setting. Right here, we have our sync button. This will allow you to uh, sync to your DAW's tempo. Uh, for the rate. So to demonstrate here, you'll see we have all the way up to 132s with triplets as well as an option. This is your fine tune knob. You can give it like a small drift, which is pretty cool with the LFO. very subtle. This is your layer volume and as you bring it down it becomes more transparent which is lower and more solid as you raise the volume up. And here's your crossfade. So you can use your the mod wheels attached to the crossfade. You could always unlearn this and move it somewhere else if you want to use the mod wheel for something else. Mm -hmm. 
And if this is on, this will move with it as well. So I'll demonstrate that. And that's pretty much it for the center. Here on the left is your purge for the layer. So you can purge a layer and just listen to one side if you like. Click on this, this will bring your menu down and you also have left and right toggles to kind of just toggle through things. This is your ADSR, your attack, decay, sustain, release. Uh, this is your ADSR link. This will link to, um, so say you got something here on the left you want to set to, right? Click on that, it'll set to this, and same thing goes for the other side. So if you wanna set something here, so say this is off and you wanna set something here, say and you click this side, it'll, it'll link up. This is your filter switch here. So this goes between high pass and low pass. Uh, right here is your filter link. So this is great because you, if you wanna move both of the uh, filters at the same time. You can just link that up. It'll automatically switch if you noticed. So what will happen is if you have the low pass on and this is the high pass, if you click on this, it'll automatically change to the low pass on the other side. And then you can kind of see and move everything accordingly. And then same same thing for your high pass. So if you want to if you want to link it up, you can do the same there. If you do change there and you start changing, this won't automatically change if it's locked. As you can see, it'll stay on high pass. But if you can always just switch it like this, or um, you can just just double click it and it'll snap back to the same filter. Uh, right here is your um, polarity flip. So when you're using the LFO, I'll demonstrate. And here's your tenuverter. Right, you can flip it then. This is matched up, you can unlink. Let's unlink so you can actually so you know you can you can flip the polarities on the filters between the cutoffs on the low pass. This is your expression knob that is connected to MIDI CC11. Well, this will control your overall volume, your master volume. Right here on the right here is your randomizer. So this, what this will randomize is your attenuverters on the main page only, uh, the filters, your left, your high pass and low pass filters, uh, your source material. So any any of these settings, it'll it'll change these up as well, um, and then you can just kind of branch off of that. So it's a great it's a great source of uh, endless inspiration. So I'll demonstrate here what happens. But also, you know, move the pan knob as well, it'll change positions. And then you can kind of see where it's set at and adjust accordingly from there if you like. And that's it on the main page. Uh, we'll go to the effects now. We have a convolution reverb with over 50 
uh, impulse responses to choose from. Delay, sync option to your DAW. Phaser, stereo, width. So this is mono and it's all the way down. And then all the way up. Distortion, saturation, a rotator, emulates a, a cabinet kind of effect with a, like a rotary kind of really cool, some cool stuff you can do with that. Your chorus, you have your lo-fi here um, and your tape saturation. Um, so you can control, so if you have your, whatever you have your LFO set to, um, you can control any parameters that have our attenuverters here. So this is some cool thing you can do is if you have um, the distortion on, you can do a this, All right, say, and then the, you can flip the distortion, put the saturation on, and you can kind of get a cool little effect with these alternating modulations between the distortion and saturation. And you can do that here as well with the tape saturation. Some, you know, really cool experimental stuff you can kind of explore. The delay also, you can, when you, you also have dotted triplets. Lo-fi. It's pretty endless, all the uh, things you can try out and do. Now we're gonna go through some presets. I'm gonna hold some chords down for a few seconds so you guys can hear how everything evolves.
Now we're going to go through our evolutionary cycles. This is to demonstrate how long our paths evolve over time. Now this is a big reason why when we say evolving pads, we add that non-static evolving pads in there because when we sampled quantum, we sampled it slightly different intentionally. Um, so within the same sound source, you're getting this evolving pattern where that it really does feel like it's constantly changing. So if you're pressing a note and a couple of seconds later you press another note, that's not the same note. And then it's also going to, when it loops, it's also going to um, start in a different position than it did because of the time variation. Um, and then adding the modulation from the LFOs even takes it to another even deeper level of evolution. So it's a combination of all these things that give it this non-static evolving feeling. See we're approaching on the right here, Destiny Cloud Layer is about to finish its evolutionary cycle. And the layer on the left is still going. So they never start in the same place when it loops. And then on top of that are the evolutionary cycles within the same sound source. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, give it a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us grow. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.